Titans general manager Rand Carthon makes two fantastic signings using his San Francisco connections to bring in some solid players for the Titans. We're going to talk about all that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Titans fans, welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland, we have so much to talk about on today's show. I told you guys, I told you, as soon as I got done recording for yesterday's show, the Titans make two signings on Tuesday night, two fantastic signings. One, offensive lineman Daniel Brunskill and defensive lineman Arden Key. We're going to talk about both of those signings and both of those players. But also, we have to talk about some decisions the Titans made on Wednesday as well, giving a restricted free agent tender to not only Tierra Tart, but also Aaron Brewer and an exclusive rights free agent tag to Naquan Jones. The Titans also decided to part ways with two wide receivers. We'll talk about that. And what needs remain for the Tennessee Titans in free agency? How can they address them? We're going to dive into all of that. Before we do, I want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. Titans fans, let's dive right in here to the signings for the Titans. We have Daniel Brunskill. Interior offensive lineman, well, versatile offensive lineman, quite frankly. Brunskill is six foot five, 300 pounds. Now, he is on the older side. He's 29 years old, but his first two years in the NFL, he didn't play at all until he got to San Francisco when he was 25 years old. So he should have less wear and tear on his body than you would typically see for a 29 year old NFL player. Brunskill did spend four years in San Francisco. He was a full time starter for the 49ers in 2020 and 2021, where he started at right guard primarily, but also played some center as well. And that's one of the big draws for Daniel Brunskill for the Titans is that versatility that he has. He's played most of his career at right guard. That's where I project him to start for the Titans is at right guard. But he's also had 500 career snaps at center and starts at center. He's also also had 300 career snaps at right tackle. So Brunskill is a guy who could play up and down the offensive line. If injuries strike, he can move around. Now, I know what people are going to say. He was a backup. Yes, in 2022, he was not slated as a starter for San Francisco. But he played in 17 games for San Francisco and had 600 snaps. So he's a guy who played a ton in San Francisco despite not being slated as a starter heading into the year. And one other thing that pops out from Brunskill's performance with the 49ers last year, zero sacks. Do you hear me, folks? Do you hear me? Daniel Brunskill gave up zero sacks. In over 600 pass blocking or over 400 pass blocking reps last year, zero penalties for Daniel Brunskill in 17 games, zero sacks, zero penalties. Brunskill is a very good pass protector in 1,897 pass blocking reps in his career. He's only surrendered 11 sacks and 95 pressures. So pretty solid as a pass protector. Could get better as a run protect or as a run blocker, but again, to me, this signifies a philosophical change for the Titans. Before they wanted guys who could run block. You got to be able to run block, and we'll take whatever you can give us as a pass blocker. Brunskill is not that. Brunskill has been a better pass blocker in his career than he's been a run blocker. But he's a guy who does have the ability to run block as well. We know San Francisco's system is heavy on the run game. So it's not like Brunskill is unable to do that, but he's just been very, very impressive in pass blocking throughout his career. So a really nice signing for the Titans. Obviously, the San Francisco connection with Rand Carthon, a guy who watched Brunskill for all four of his years in San Francisco, probably knows the type of guy that the Titans are going to be bringing into their locker room as well. Look, is Brunskill a long-term starter for the Titans? Probably not. 
He's going to get a two-year deal from the Titans. I would imagine it's going to be five to six million dollars, something really cheap. And he's going to come in, have a great chance to be a starter on the offensive line. But at the same time, while giving the Titans short-term benefit, he's not a guy who's going to kill the Titans long-term in their financial situation. They didn't give him any kind of long-term contract. And he's not a guy that prevents you from taking an interior offensive lineman or an offensive lineman of any kind in the NFL draft. It's a really smart signing from Rand Carthon to get Brunskill into Tennessee. So I love that one. The second signing, even more newsworthy, and it is Arden Key, who is signed to the Titans on a three-year deal worth $21 million, bringing him over from Jacksonville. Arden Key is six foot five, 240 pounds. He can play on the exterior as an edge rusher. He can rush from the interior as well. He really had some great moments in his career in the last two years with San Francisco in 2021. There's the Rand Carthon connection there. But with Jacksonville last year as a rotational pass rusher, he can rush from the outside. He also, like I was saying, revived his career with the ability to rush from the interior as well. Teams have been lining Arden Key up as a three-technique defensive tackle in pass rush situations to allow him to take advantage of interior matchups and interior offensive linemen. Gives you inside-out rush versatility, a relentless physical attacker as well, which fits perfectly within the Titans defense. Look, Arden Key had a disappointing start to his career. He spent four years or three years in Las Vegas and Oakland, 2018 to 2020 with the Raiders. And no lie, a disappointing start to his career. But in 2021, when he got with San Francisco, he had six and a half sacks as a rotational rusher. Then he went to Jacksonville last year and had four and a half sacks and five tackles for loss. And not only that, but Arden Key started to play his best football at the end of the season. The last month of the season, Arden Key was second in the entire NFL in quarterback pressures. One, one pressure behind Nick Bosa, the defensive player of the year. So for the last month of the NFL season, Arden Key was one of the best edge rushers in the NFL. And if you want to go check out Arden Key's performances against the Titans, it's pretty obvious that this was a guy that Mike Vrabel said, ran, go get me Arden Key. Look, is Arden Key a full-time dominant starting edge rusher? No, he's not. He is a guy who needs to be a part of a rotation. But I see Arden Key as a similar signing to Danico Autry. You steal a guy away from a division rival who may not be one of the most popular names in the NFL, but you watch the tape, you watch the way he plays, and he absolutely can be a key contributor to the Titans' defense. And if you're like me, and you were a little bit worried about the edge rusher situation with Harold Landry coming back from a torn ACL and Rashad Weaver, who gave you up and down play, shout out to my sister who's in the chat as well, uh, on vacation, have fun, get out of here, don't worry about football. But uh, if you think about Arden Key as a guy who's in a rotation with Rashad Weaver, Harold Landry, Danico Autry, Jeffrey Simmons, Tierra Tart, I mean, that is a great, great package of players. And I think with the addition of Arden Key, the Titans have the potential to get their pass rush back to what it was in 2021. Dumping Bud Dupree and then adding Arden Key for seven. I mean, Arden Key is going to get a three-year deal for $21 million. The Titans are getting three years of Arden Key for the same price that they were going to pay for Bud Dupree for one season. And Arden Key has been a more productive player as a rotational player, not even a starter for the last few years. So again, to me, this continues the trend for Arden or for Rand Carthon, where Rand Carthon is going out and getting value players who maybe weren't starters with their previous team, Dillard, Brunskill, even Gifford, you could add in there. Arden Key, they weren't starters, but if you give them increased opportunity, you have the ability to get an insane value on what you're paying them on your contract. The Titans are paying these guys backup money or low-level starter money with the potential to get pretty solid starting level production. So the Dillard signing, I was, eh, you know, the Gifford signing, I was, meh. but seeing Daniel Brunskill and Arden Key get signed by the Titans late last night or late on Tuesday night, 
I absolutely love those values for Rand Carthon. No, they're not certified long-term edge rusher of the future, guard of the future type signings. But not every player can be a pro bowler. Not every player can be an all-star. Not every player is all pro. You need key contributors on value contracts that are low risk, high reward signings. And that is exactly what Rand Carthon has done without sacrificing the Titans' financial future. These are my two favorite signings that the Titans have made so far. But with that in mind, we're going to move forward. The Titans made more moves on Wednesday. They gave a second-round tender to Tier Tart. They gave a second-round tender to Aaron Brewer and much more. We're going to dive into that. Before we do, want to let you know that today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast is presented by FanDuel. Look, the NFL season may be over. But we are in the best part of the NBA season, and it is so much fun to bet on NBA games. So if I were you, and I was a new customer to FanDuel, I'd check it out right now because you can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back even if your first bet doesn't win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, it's super easy to use, and My favorite thing is a single game parlay on an NBA game. You take a couple of different bets and you add them together. You can bet a little to win a lot, dude. Uh, I'm a Lakers fan. Anthony Davis over 20 points. Anthony Davis over 10 rebounds. D'Angelo Russell over 15 points. D'Angelo Russell two three-pointers. D'Angelo Russell five assists. Jared Vanderbilt six rebounds. Malik Beasley 100 threes. And you put that all together, if you hit all of them, you got a chance for a big payout. It's such a great time. So don't miss your chance to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Titans fans, we just talked about two free agent signings the Titans made since we last spoke to really good value signings for Rand Carthon. But the Titans made three moves on Wednesday when the new league year opened, placing tenders on certain restricted free agents. We're going to dive into that before we do. want to thank you guys for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. Remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round, on all platforms, and always for free. I'm going to continue breaking down all the free agency moves and all the news throughout the week. We're going to start our deep dive into NFL draft prospects here in just a couple of weeks, as well as we get closer to the draft. Make sure you don't miss any of the content that I'm putting up again, Monday through Friday, free on all platforms. Get locked in to the Locked on Titans podcast, where it's your team every day. But moving right along, we talked about Brunskill. We talked about Arden Key. Love those signings for the Titans. Now I want to get into the restricted free agent moves the Titans made. And the Titans tendered three players on Wednesday. Number one, Tier Tart. Now this news came earlier than most, but it makes all the sense in the world. And if you go back and look at the interior uh, defensive line conversations that we had earlier in February sometime, if you look at the in-house free agent conversations that we had, I have said all along the Titans need to tender Tier Tart as a second round tender. Okay, so that's exactly what the Titans did. They gave Tier Tart, who is a restricted free agent, a second-round tender. A lot of you guys are probably wondering, what does that mean? Well, I will tell you. So, when you put a second-round tender on a restricted free agent, what you're doing is you're telling them you can go out and get a new contract from a new team. All right? Go out and get a new contract. If you do that, the Titans have two options. The Titans can either A, match the contract from the new team and bring Tart back, or they could say, fine, you take him, and then that team has to give the Titans a second-round pick. So no matter what, if the Titans lose Tier Tart to another team, they will get a second-round pick back. Now, the other side to that is, if Tier Tart doesn't go out and get another contract, if he doesn't get another offer from another team, the Titans can do one of two things. 
They can either A, give Tart a long-term deal themselves, or they can have Tart play out the season on a one-year deal worth $4.3 million. So that is how a second-round tender works in the NFL. I think that the Titans do match a contract that Tart would get. I think that the Titans probably work on getting T.R. Tart done on a long-term deal. They need to get Tart back, and I've explained this before. I'll go over it quickly again. Tart is a key, key call to the Titans' defense. The Titans like to play nickel defense with five defensive backs on the field. No matter what, go in two tight end. Go in 22 personnel. Go in 12. Go in 21. Whatever you want to play on offense, we're running nickel, and we're going to be able to stop your running attack. And here's why. Because Tierra Tart is able to take up multiple blockers and not get beat by a double team. When Tierra Tart takes up multiple blockers up front, that allows the Titans linebackers to flow side to side and make moves and make plays and make tackles. So having Tierra Tart as your nose tackle allows the Titans to play good run defense in nickel package. He is incredibly important. So I'm glad that the Titans got a second round tender on Tierra Tart. That was a smart move. And even if he comes back on a one-year deal worth $4.3 million, that money is worth it for Tierra Tart. Now on the other side, the Titans gave a second round tender to Aaron Brewer. And I'll tell you one of two things. One is what it is. One is what I think. What it is, if the Titans gave a second round tender to Aaron Brewer, and are going to pay him $4.3 million this year, they see him as the starting center. Aaron Brewer is expected to be a starting center. That's what the Tennessee Titans told you when they gave him a second-round tender. What I think is, I think that Aaron Brewer is nowhere near worth $4 million. He is a vet minimum type player who should not be slated as a starter. If you wanted to bring Aaron Brewer back on a $2 million deal and let him be a backup offensive lineman in the in the, the number one reserve for the interior of the offensive line, I could accept that. Look, maybe Aaron Brewer plays better at center than he did at left guard. I think that he will play better at center than he did at left guard. But is that good enough? Is Aaron Brewer at center good enough to be a starting offensive lineman? No, not in my opinion after what I've seen from him recently. So I was a little bit shocked that the Titans gave Aaron Brewer. I, I was a little shocked that Aaron Brewer uh, got the second round tender. I don't know how else to say it. Um, not certain that he's worked that. I guarantee you that Aaron Brewer isn't getting a contract from another team because no team is going to pay a second round pick for an undrafted free agent who's a borderline starter, most likely a backup in the NFL. So that surprised me. That that really did surprise me. No lie there. But the Titans also gave an exclusive rights free agent tender to Naquan Jones. What does that mean? Basically means that Naquan Jones is going to play on a one-year contract for a little over a million dollars for the Titans. He has no choice. Naquan Jones' two options are play for the Titans on a one-year deal or don't play football at all. So he's going to be back with the Titans. So the Titans shirt up their interior offensive line or the interior defensive line depth today with Brunskill and Brewer. They sure up the interior offensive line depth as well. I do want to mention here, the Titans did not tender Nick Westbrook-Akine or Cody Hollister. Now we can, we can have a moment and clap here. Yes, get these slow, plodding wide receivers. I don't care if they're six foot 100. Get them out of here. We need guys who get open with speed and can catch the ball. Neither NWI or Hollister do that. Now, I feel bad putting NWI and Hollister in the same grouping because NWI is a far superior player to Cody Hollister. But either way, they represent a philosophical look at the wide receiver position that the Titans need to move away from. Okay? Now, the Titans may very well bring Nick Westbrook-Akine back on a deal. They may go ahead and do that, but they're not giving him any sort of guarantee like they did with Brewer and Tart by tendering him as a restricted free agent. Go ahead. Go find another deal. Go find another team. When you realize you're not worth very much, come back to us, and we'll make you our wide receiver five, which is a role. Nick Westbrook-Akina is not a starting wide receiver. He's not a wide receiver three. He's not a wide receiver four. He's a wide receiver five or a wide receiver six 
that should help you on special teams and play in a pinch. The Titans have put him in a situation that didn't make any sense. That's the Titans' fault, not NWI's fault. But either way, it doesn't matter. They still need to move forward from having NWI as any of their top four wide receiving options on the team. So they did that today. But with all of the transactions and all of the news, it's time to move to what remaining needs the Titans have now, how they can solve them in free agency. We're going to discuss all of that in just a moment. Before we get into it, I want to thank you guys again for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. As for your second listen, you guys have to check out the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. It's hosted by Damian Parson and Keith Sanchez. They're going to give you in-depth coverage of the biggest prospects. They're also going to do deep dives into sleepers and hidden gems as well. Find the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast wherever you get your podcast. That's any podcast platform. The Locked On NFL Draft YouTube channel. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network where it's your team every day. fans I'm cooking today baby I'm absolutely cooking I hope you guys in the chat on YouTube live anybody listening in their car as they commute are enjoying this episode feeling absolutely electric right now with all these moves from the Tennessee Titans so far we talked about the signing of Daniel Brunskill the versatile physical durable interior offensive lineman from San Francisco we talked about the signing of Arden Key the long physical, aggressive, productive pass rusher who the Titans stole from Jacksonville. I love those value signings. They fill immediate needs with really good players that don't break the bank and affect you financially in the future. The Titans give a second round tender to Tier Tart, Aaron Brewer. I like the Tart one, confused by the Brewer one. They give an exclusive free agent, exclusive rights free agent deal to Naquan Jones. They do not give a restricted free agent tender to Nick Westbrook-Akine or Cody Hollister, making them unrestricted free agents. So that's a recap of what we talked about so far. Let's dive into the Titans' remaining needs in free agency and how they can solve them. And for a moment, I know I get up on my soapbox here and there at times with you guys, um, but I got to just take a moment. Somebody tried to go on Facebook and say that on yesterday's show, I said that the Titans would not make any more free agent signings at all after signing Aziz Alshir. You guys who listen to the show every day, how does that happen? When I spent the entire final segment of yesterday's show going over free agent options for the Titans going forward, how how is it possible that someone could misconstrue and misinterpret my show so severely that they thought I said the Titans were not going to make any more moves after Aziz Alshir. I don't understand. I don't understand. I, I mean, I could literally write on a chalkboard, two plus two equals four, and someone in the back of the classroom would yell, you're an idiot, it's not five. I didn't put five, I put... Anyways, off the soapbox, I digress. Moving right along. Thank you guys all so much who are like logical, intelligent people who understand what I'm saying on a day-to-day basis. Um, Do want to respond to one thing in the chat. I like having fun here at the end of the show and respond to a few things. Mike, Mike is the most critical watcher of my show of any person I have ever met. You could go through any show I have, and there are at least three comments from Mike explaining why he thinks I'm wrong. But he still tunes into the show every day, and I appreciate you for that, Mike. But Mike said, figures that Tyler wouldn't like the Dillard signing The best one so far, a potential left tackle at that price. Mike, I got to tell you, that all depends on how much faith you have in Andre Dillard as being a starter in the NFL. Go look at some of the grades that some people have given that signing for the Titans. Go look at some of the best, top-notch offensive line gurus in the NFL media. Like a Brandon Thorne, for example, who wasn't super high on the move. Look, the Titans could get lucky. And Andre Dillard could be their left tackle for the next five years, and he turns out to be fantastic. And he was just some hidden gem in Philadelphia. I'm not buying it. I think he's probably just a low-level, middle-of-the-road at best, left tackle, which, look at his contract. 
That's how he was paid. So I still think, I still think if the Titans have a left tackle there in front of them at pick number 11, like Paris Johnson Jr., my point is here, you don't not, this is going to be a double negative, but you don't not pick Paris Johnson Jr. because you signed Andre Dillard. Dillard signing should have zero, zero impact on future moves. I'm not saying that Dillard can't come in and be a competent left tackle, but I'm saying you don't let him affect moves that you're going to make to have the future in mind. The realistic outcome here is Dillard is on the Titans for two seasons during his guaranteed money, and then he's gone. That's the most realistic option, okay? So I don't mean to be overly pessimistic. I'm just trying to be realistic with you guys. I'm not going to act like the Andre Dillard signing solves the Titans' left tackle position for five years. It doesn't. You still take Paris Johnson. If you like Broderick Jones, you still take him. So that's how I feel about that. But moving right along, the Titans' remaining needs. With the signing of Daniel Brunskill, with the signing of Andre Dillard, with the tendering of Aaron Brewer on a second-round tender, I don't think the Titans need to address offensive line anymore in free agency. If they want to bring in another cheap swing tackle for like 2 to $3 million for one year just to some depth, I'm cool with that, but they don't need to. Where they need to move their focus to is wide receiver. The Titans need to get a wide receiver in the draft. Don't get me wrong. I see you guys talking about, you know, Jalen Hyatt, whatever wide receiver you like, all that. I get it. I get it. But the Titans can't just add a wide receiver in the draft. They need to add a veteran wide receiver with speed in free agency. Or at least, even if it's not the speediest guy because you're looking to get your speed guy in the draft, the Titans have to add a veteran receiver to this group. Guys that I like, McCole Hardman, Paris Campbell. uh, If they don't want to go with a speed guy, Mac Hollins makes a ton of sense. Maybe a guy like Darius Slayton could make some sense for the Titans as well. Uh... Cameron Haynes says, trade for T. Higgins. Cameron, I'm sure that you weren't watching Cincinnati Bengals general manager Duke Tobin's press conference at the Combine, but they are not trading T. Higgins this year. They're not doing it. So we can just give that up. Uh, Guys like Jerry Judy are potentially on the trade market. A guy like Cortland Sutton, one of those guys. Maybe you go out and do something like that. Either way, the Titans need to, during this free agency period, address a veteran wide receiver need For me, again, I like Paris Campbell the best, and I like Mac Hollins after that, guys that make a lot of sense that are two different types of players, depending on what kind of flavor of ice cream you like. One thing that I do want to say that's great news for the Titans in their pursuit of a veteran free agent wide receiver, Juju Smith-Schuster, Jacoby Myers, and Alan Lazard, the three probably best wide receivers on the free agent market, some were expecting them to get $14, $15, $16, $18 million. All those dudes got $11 million a year. Three years, $11 million. So that means if the top wide receivers on the market are getting way less than people expected, then that means the mid-tier options are going to get way less than people expected. Rather than paying $7 million for a McCall Hardman or a Paris Campbell, you're probably only going to pay four. Rather than paying $4 million for a Matt Collins or Darius Slayton, you're probably only going to pay two. So... Great news for the Titans. They still need to add a wide receiver in free agency. Also, tight end. Look, I want the Titans. I am smitten by Darnell Washington. He is a perfect fit with Chigakonkwo, okay? But even if the Titans were to get Darnell Washington in free agency, they still are in the draft. They still, they still need to add a third tight end who is your Jeff Swaim type. Look, if you guys are sick of seeing Jeff Swaim out there, I totally get it. But like I said with Nick Westbrook-Akine, if Nick Westbrook-Akine was drafted or was used as the fourth or fifth wide receiver instead of the first or second, people would feel a lot different about him. If the Titans used Jeff Swaim as the third tight end rather than the starting tight end, people would feel a lot different about him. Okay? So, and Clint, yes, I said the Titans didn't need to add any more linebackers. In free agency, not all free agents. I I thought it was pretty obvious, Clint, but I'm getting tagged and people on Facebook trying to, uh, you know, besmirch me out there. It's ridiculous. Uh, Moving right along, though, the Titans need to add a veteran tight end 
who is a pure blocker, who can be that third tight end behind Chickaconquo and behind hopefully a drafted tight end, as this is a fantastic draft class for tight ends. Finally, we do need to talk about cornerback and running back. I still think the Titans need to add a veteran cornerback in free agency. They can draft one, yes, but the Titans have such a young group. Justice Lawson, I wouldn't mind Foster Moreau. 100% justice. That is my number one target for the Titans at tight end in free agency is Foster Moreau. Um, would love to have him added. Uh, how real is the buyer talk? Josh, it's not something that I'm going to go into a lot today, but nonsense. I'll tell you that nonsense is what it is. But at tight end, I'd love that. At cornerback, I still love a Rocky Sin or a Marcus Peters. The Titans have four cornerbacks, five cornerbacks, Fulton, Farley, Molden, uh, McCreary, and Avery, who are all still within their first four years in the NFL. They need a veteran in there so bad. You can add another rookie if you want. Cool. But they need a veteran so bad in that room. A guy like Marcus Peters with fire and aggression, who played a lot better at the end of the year in 2022, coming off an ACL tear the year before. I think that would make a lot of sense for the Titans. He's exactly what those young guys need. Uh, also, a guy like Rocky Sin, 27 years old, outside cornerback, man coverage guy, would fit in the Titans scheme, and there's familiarity there from his time with the Colts. I see a lot of you guys saying Darius Slay, Darius Slay. Look, Darius Slay is a really good player. No wrong there. Dar you're not wrong there. Darius Slay is a really good player. But Darius Slay is still going to command more money than the Titans can spend at cornerback. That's just the reality. The Titans cannot afford to pay Darius Slay what he's going to get at his next stop. They're just not in a position to do that right now with the cornerback room and their financial situation. Finally, running back. I've talked about running back. If the Titans trade Derrick Henry, we're going to have a different conversation. I don't think that's going to happen. So they need a compliment to Derrick Henry. They can bring back Dontrell Hilliard. I'd love a guy like Jarek McKinnon. I'd love a guy like Kenyon Drake. I'd love a guy like J.D. McKissick, who was released earlier in the week by the Washington Commanders. So all of those guys make sense for me. So wide receiver, tight end, cornerback, running back. That's the four spots I think need to be filled by the Titans in free agency. This has been an extra long, jam-packed edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to continue breaking down all the free agent action throughout the week, throughout next week. We're going to get into draft prospects. I went over 180 NFL draft prospects the last two years on the show. You're not going to want to miss the draft breakdowns that I go into at every single position. Make sure you get subscribed. Make sure you stay subscribed for Monday through Friday. Free Tennessee Titans content on all platforms. Thank you all so much for tuning in. That's going to do it for me today, though. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titans.